Hey everybody, it's Dr. Riser. If you like what you see in our videos, make sure you click subscribe so that you don't miss out on any future videos about functional medicine, nutrition, and tips on how to reclaim your health the easy way with Functional Health Center of the Carolinas. Hey everyone, it is Whiteboard Wednesday. We're gonna talk about some health-related stuff. Today it is about the thyroid. And yeah, I make a ton of videos about the thyroid, but for some reason it continues to be a problem. And so I wanna get as much information out there as I possibly can. But today's a little different. We're gonna talk about exercise and your thyroid. So women, when we talk about exercise, I hear a lot of patients that they come in and I say, do you exercise? And they say, absolutely. I get on the treadmill, I go out for a run, and I do about an hour on there. I'll do 40 minutes or so on and so forth. And they're doing these extended long runs. And I see it and hear about it all the time. And even if you don't have a thyroid issue, for whatever reason, I always hear people say that, yeah, I, you know, obviously I exercise a lot. I go on these runs and I'm trying to lose weight, but I can't. Well, these extended cardio runs, they, I mean, they don't do a lot. I would rather you do high intensity interval training where you're sprinting and then you walk and you sprint again. But specifically for people with slow thyroid, hypothyroidism, Hashimoto's disease, there is a research article that I will always show my patients that shows when you are doing extended cardio, basically where you're keeping your heart rate a little bit over 70% of where it should be on these extended runs, you actually start to produce less T3. So let's get into the thyroid hormone, how it works. And we have obviously the whiteboard we're gonna go on. Apologies, I'm not a very good person as far as art and drawing. So we have the head here of the body, we have your human body, and right here is gonna be your thyroid, okay? So you have your brain, you have the hypothalamus, you have the pituitary, and there's gonna be a signal that comes there, and we've talked about this before, and it's gonna be your TRH. And then from here, from the pituitary gland that comes down is something called TSH. And that is really what you get tested all the time with the thyroid component as far as your labs. And we know, like we talked about in another video, that the 0.45 to 4.5 isn't exactly giving you the best idea of what your thyroid is doing. 1.8 to 3 would be a better look on your TSH lab value. But that obviously doesn't give the whole story. You have two other hormones. So we have T4, which your thyroid will start to produce and it produces a lot of T4. It produces another hormone called T3, but it doesn't really produce a lot of T3. You know, look at maybe 7% of the T3 in your body is produced by the thyroid. So what happens is your T4 goes down the rest of the body, liver and your GI tract through here. There's some enzymes and things in there that's gonna convert your T4 into T3. And now that's where the majority of your T3 is coming from. You convert your T4 into your T3. T3, then goes out into the body and does all the jobs the thyroid needs to have happen, heart rate, temperature control, metabolism, you name it. And that's why when you have low T3, you have all these thyroid symptoms. So what happens when you do cardio exercise? Your body actually starts to produce less T3. Okay, well, what happens? T4 stays the same, TSH stays the same when you do this cardio activity, but T3 goes down. That means when you are doing this extended cardio, your metabolism is gonna slow down. You're gonna store fat most likely when you do this. And that's why when you go on these long runs, you're not losing the weight with a hypothyroid situation and you don't have any muscle, you know, you're not cut, you don't look like these sprinters do. So you need to switch up that exercise. So what you want to do, you can't sustain that cardiovascular, you can't sustain that heart rate over that 70%. I'll link you to this article uh, in the caption here but you wanna do high intensity interval training. Try it out, go on a treadmill, plug in for 10 minutes, and what you wanna do is do an all out sprint as fast as your body can take you, obviously it's gonna be different for everybody, for maybe 10 seconds, that's it. Then walk for a minute, let, self, let everything cool down, and then you're gonna go back into that sprint for 10 seconds, and at, the more you do this, obviously you can do it longer and longer, but you don't wanna to get to that point where you're sustaining this heart rate for too long. And what they've shown when you do high intensity interval training, obviously it doesn't affect this, your T3, and that's important for somebody with hypothyroidism, but it's gonna make your body burn fat. When you do these short bursts, your body recruits every single thing it can to give your body, or even specifically your muscles, the ability to run as fast as it can. So you're gonna burn fat, burn sugar, skeletal muscle will make you more insulin sensitive. It's gonna need that glucose to burn. So that's the best thing you can do if you have a thyroid situation, a hypothyroid situation. Obviously not talking about hyper, but hypothyroid, slow thyroid, Hashimoto's, stop 
running a long time, okay? I'm gonna link to this little uh, research article just so you can read through it, uh, but in the results and the abstract, it'll tell you exactly what they've found. So do, do your high intensity interval training, guarantee that will budge, and that will get that weight loss to budge a little bit. Obviously there's gonna be more to the story and that's what we do here when we treat uh, hypothyroid patients and Hashimoto's, but again, this long distance running that you guys always do, cut it out. And actually, if you really think about it, instead of running for 45 minutes to an hour, you can get your workout done in 10 minutes now. It's lots of uh, shorter time and you're gonna get more of a benefit. So that's what happens with the thyroid. We're producing this T4 and this T3. T4 gets conver converted into T3. But when you go on a long distance run, that T3 is gonna go down. You need to start doing high intensity interval training. It'll keep the T3 up. That'll keep the thyroid working great, keep your hormones working great, and you'll lose some weight.